What's up, you beautiful bastards? Hope you've had a fantastic Thursday. Welcome back to The Philip DeFranco Show, and let's just jump into it. And the first thing we're gonna talk about today is why viewers, creators, small and large, are freaking out on YouTube right now. Why is YouTube obsessed with making it harder and harder for subscribers to get your content? And now, being subscribed on the sub feed, which was the one sacred place you could find the content you're subscribed to in chronological order, is now being optimized. So what is Ethan Klein of H3H3 Productions talking about? Well, he and many others are incredibly concerned about a tweet that came from the official team YouTube account. It's in response to the question, why aren't the videos in my subscription feed in chronological order anymore? Switch Team YouTube responded, just to clarify, we are currently experimenting with how to show content in the subs feed. We find that some viewers are able to more easily find the videos they want to watch when we order the subs feed in a personalized order versus always showing most recent video first. So essentially, YouTube's response here is, tis but a test, don't freak out about it, it's no big deal. And following a lot of the criticism, Team YouTube responded again this morning, specifically to H3H3 Productions, and they wrote, This is a very small experiment. We're testing a new and completely optional way to sort the subs feed with a small group of people. All videos are still there, and again, people have control over the setting, aka, don't have to use it. And my personal response to YouTube here is, it appears pretty transparent what you're trying to do with the mention of it. It's just an experiment. It's, it's a sm very small experiment. You're, you're minimizing the testing, but everyone knows that if you're testing something, you're thinking about potentially implementing this in the future. As far as YouTube referring to it as an optional setting, sure, as of right now. And personally, I want to believe YouTube that they would never make this the new normal, but there is a reason that there are so many creators that are concerned about this, and there are so many creators that are not trusting of YouTube. It's called history. The best way to predict what a company or person is going to do, it, you look back to their past actions. And you also, at the same time, look at what's around them. And what's around them, you have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter all kind of abandoning chronological order. And so why did those companies switch over despite there being a lot of people hating on that change? Because they want to increase engagement. If you are more engaged with the app, you're going to use it more, you're going to continue using it in the future. So based on your past viewing habits, your engagement, you are then fed similar pieces of content or content from those creators. The incredibly unfortunate part of that is it can hurt discoverability for very small creators that are trying to get a start. And that's just one of several complaints and issues. Now in YouTube's defense, I think part of the experiment potentially comes from a good place. There are some people and channels that actually do not benefit from having a chronological feed, and these are usually channels that don't post that often. They might not have a dedicated schedule. And so potentially the change would increase the likelihood that someone would watch a video from a channel that does not have to post every day. Also, there are a lot of users on YouTube that are subscribed to a ton of people, but they only consume content regularly from a few of them. And YouTube's pictures, essentially, they want to reorganize that clutter for you so that you can get straight to the content you normally consume. But I think the simple argument against that is, well, that is what the, the homepage recommended Watch Next has has become. Why mess with the one and only page on your website that gives people the raw flow of videos that they subscribe for? YouTube, I beg you, you've done enough. Just just don't touch this thing. I know all the other places have done that, but but be YouTube, be different. But of course, that's just my personal takeaway based off of my experience with YouTube and, and the issues we've had sometimes with, with our content getting to our audience or not. And so that's why I'm personally fearful of this change. It just seems like another way for our, our content to be suppressed or lost in the shuffle. I believe that it could be truly devastating. So with that said, I do want to pass the question off to you. Well, what's your takeaway here? Do, do you get what YouTube's trying to do? Do you, do you love it? Do you hate it? Any feelings you have on it, let me know in those comments down below. But from that, I want to share some stuff I love today and today in all Awesome. And the first bit of awesome today is if you're going to snag any of our gear from shopdefranco.com today, today we have a 20% off link for pillows. Which, to my surprise, I found out yesterday is one of our best-selling product types. Although it turns out it has largely been carried by our Let's Make Mistakes Together pillows. But also, honestly, who needs another pillow that's like, home is where the heart is? No, snag a don't be stupid, stupid pillow. Reminder to stay humble, hustle hard. Or the perfect gift for your relatives on Facebook. The why be informed when you can use your feelings as your facts pillow. So if you want to snag one while you can with a 20% discount, uh, just click the link in the, the top description. Then in Trailer Awesome, we got another trailer for Won't You Be My Neighbor? I'm really excited for that one, even though I, I, the likelihood of me ugly crying during that movie is, is pretty high. Then we have the Honest Game trailer for State of Decay. It's Shawn Mendes asking the web's most searched questions. Life Noggin asking us, what if we could teleport? And if you want to see the full versions of everything I just shared, the secret link of the day, anything at all, links as always are in the description down below. And then let's talk about the situation with Sean King, Sharita Dixon Cole, and a Texas State Trooper. So Sean King, who describes himself as both an activist and a journalist, he's also a columnist for The Intercept, he posts something on 
on Sunday. And it's a statement detailing allegations that state trooper Officer Hubbard had sexually assaulted Sharita Dixon Cole while she was handcuffed in his vehicle. He says she was kidnapped and raped by this officer, says that she was being held hostage. He says she was told she was being stopped because Hubbard expected she was driving while intoxicated, adding Cole voluntarily performed and passed all DUI, DWI protocol, including a breathalyzer. However, Hubbard decided he, quote, didn't like her attitude and that he was going to take her to jail anyway. Then saying the officer asked her if she wanted to go home as he hiked up her skirt, adding he told her that she could earn her way home if she really wanted to go. And then the allegations get worse. We're talking threat of murder. According to Sean King's post, Sharita had called her boyfriend just as she was getting pulled over. He shows up. Allegedly, the officer asks, who is that? And according to Sean King's post, when she explained it was her fiance, he asked her, was he armed? When she said he was not, Hubbard retorted, if you tell him what happened, he will be armed and his firearm will be visible when I have to shoot him. Just after this, according to the post, Hubbard tells the fiance that she's going to jail. Also, if you follow, you will be arrested as well. The fiance drives a small distance, waits for the officer to take her to jail. Eventually, he ends up just leaving. But instead, what happened, according to the post, Hubbard drove the car behind the vacant dealership and told Cole, why don't you just give me some of that sweet pussy you've been giving your fiance and then you can go home. King writing, Cole begged Hubbard to just take her to jail. He placed his hands back up her skirt and penetrated her vagina, warning her not to be stupid. He explained she could go home tonight if she just gave him what he wanted. And around that point, Cole's boyfriend had looped the highway and when the officer saw that he was coming, he stopped. And you know what? There are more details to this assault, but I'm just going to stop there because it turns out all of it's a lie. On Tuesday, the Texas Department of Public Safety released almost two hours of body cam footage and there is no crime committed. And I'm not saying like there's, there's something that could have been misinterpreted or, or, or you know what, the, the cuts, they're sketchy. The officer appears to be nothing but professional. Sharita Dixon Cole seems fine. Her fiance seems fine. In the video, it appears that she has open alcohol in the vehicle. That's alcohol right there calls it in, reads her her Miranda rights, lets her know about the situation, offers to give her a chance to call her fiance. She said she already talked to him. When he arrives, he allows him to talk briefly. They get to the jail. He places the camera in a way so you can see everything. They small talk about her fiance moving, the cost of living, her occupation, her children. He explains how the situation goes. He gives her a breathalyzer. He then lets her know that she blew in just under the legal limit, but of course he pulled her over two hours ago. And that's it. And so of course, immediately, Sean King's credibility took a massive hit. In his post, going after Officer Hubbard, he he wrote, this woman is a mother and a corporate professional. She didn't just make this up. A horrible crime was committed against her and it needs to be dealt with immediately. That was shared tens of thousands of times. He went on the radio, he spread this story and none of it is true. In response to the footage, the department said they were appalled that anyone would make such a despicable slanderous and false accusation against a peace officer who willingly risks his life every day to protect and serve the public. We saw Dixon Cole's lawyer apologize. We also saw Sean King write a whole medium post about this and it's titled, when the victim you fought for turns out to be the victimizer. Sharita Dixon Cole and the painful consequences of a false report of sexual assault and police misconduct. And in the piece, he said he did probe the claims before releasing them, but then says he has now watched the body cam footage three different times and he has seen no allegations proven true. Writing not one, not the threats, not the sexual assaults, none of it. It is one of the most bizarre things I've ever heard of. He also writes to this moment, Sharita Dixon Cole says all of her allegations are true, saying the body camera footage must have been edited, but even Sean King says it does not appear to be the case. Sean King then writing thousands of people a year are victimized by the police, but Sharita Dixon Cole is not one of those victims, adding she victimized us. She victimized the man she falsely accused and she victimized those who stood up for her, believing that she had experienced the worst crimes. And since all of this came out, Sean King spoke with Fox News and he was asked if he would issue an apology to the officer, to which King reportedly said, I would actually like to speak to the officer personally to apologize and to communicate that he was actually a model example of a good cop in this situation. He was patient and thorough. I've actually already reached out to try to make that happen. And ultimately where this story ends up for me, based on all of this information, I mean, obviously we should not lose sight of this, Sharita Dixon Cole is a garbage person for this. Not only did she try to just completely destroy a person's life with, with a false sexual assault claim, a false murder threat claim. She hurts all the real victims out there, whether it be people that have spoken out already about their story or were thinking about it, but but are now worried. Worried that because there are stories like this that no one will believe them, that there will be that doubt. And so because there's there's really not a question that, that can revolve around her, the, the question I want to pass off to you is what do you think about the Sean King situation? Because the main two things I'm seeing from the Sean King fallout, you have some people defending him, people saying there's really no 100% way to protect yourself from someone that is lying, especially when it's a situation that allegedly involved just two people. But at the same time, you have a lot of people that are angry at Sean King, many people saying that this is an example of someone wanting to push a narrative and not doing enough background work and then this just blowing up in their face. Essentially arguing that because he has a bias, because he maybe wanted to take down a cop, he didn't do the amount of work necessary to verify everything. And yet he publicly accused this 
officer by name of kidnapping and raping someone. But with all of that said, I want to pass the question off to you. What is your takeaway from this situation? Then, in not really the most surprising news, President Trump today canceled the U.S.-North Korea summit that was scheduled for June 12th. Now, as far as the reason for the cancellation, we can look to a letter from Donald Trump to Kim Jong-un. There, Donald Trump says, I was very much looking forward to being there with you. Sadly, based on the tremendous anger and open hostility displayed in your most recent statement, I feel it is inappropriate at this time to have this long-planned meeting. Later, adding, I felt a wonderful dialogue was building up between you and me, and ultimately, it is only that dialogue that matters. Adding, someday I look forward to meeting you. He says, thank you for releasing the hostages, refers to it as a beautiful gesture. And he closes, if you change your mind having to do with this most important summit, please do not hesitate to call me or write. The world, and North Korea in particular, has lost a great opportunity for lasting peace and great prosperity and wealth. This missed opportunity is truly a sad moment in history. And if you boil down that letter, it's essentially Donald Trump saying, man, I want to be a friend. I want to help you out, but you're being crazy. You did that really cool thing, and I appreciate it, but then you, then you start talking crazy again. So that's really not going to work for us, but let us know if things change. And the most recent statement from North Korea that Donald Trump is referring to in his letter is this one in which North Korea's vice foreign minister calls Pence a political dummy, where she also added, whether the U.S. will meet us at a meeting table or encounter us at a nuclear-to-nuclear -nuclear showdown is entirely dependent upon the decision and behavior of the United States. And as far as the reason for Donald Trump doing this, it's either one of two things or both of those things. One, it's a negotiating tactic to show North Korea that at any time the United States is also willing to just kind of pull away. North Korea, of course, previously canceled on South Korea, threatened to cancel with the United States. So essentially, this is President Trump showing North Korea that the United States is not going to grovel and that we are going to negotiate from a position of power. And or two, they thought that this summit would be a failure. And that's something Secretary of State Mike Pompeo hit on today when he said, I don't believe in that sense that we're in a position to believe that there could be a successful outcome. Adding, over the past many days, we have endeavored to do what Chairman Kim and I had agreed, which was to put teams, preparation teams together to begin to work to prepare for the summit and we have received no response to our inquiries from them. And personally, I'm of the belief that it's both of those reasons. But no matter the reason, it's really not shocking that we've gotten to this point. I mean, obviously a ton of us have been very skeptical since it was announced that this meeting may happen, but I mean, if, if you really look to the 29th of last month, things have just been going downhill. And on that day, if you don't remember, that was when John Bolton, the new national security advisor, mentioned the Libya model. But is it a requirement that Kim Jong-un agree to give away those weapons before uh, you give any kind of concession. I think that's right. I think we're looking at the Libya model of 2003, 2004. Now, the reason that's a problem is it's being misinterpreted by multiple parties. Bolton appears to be referencing a denuclearization process under which Libya voluntarily gave up their young nuclear weapons program. All right, so it appears that he's trying to say that we want the complete abandonment of a nuclear program, not like what we saw with the Iran deal. But by specifically mentioning the Libya model, North Korea has taken issue with that characterization because unlike Libya, they already have a functioning nuclear weapons program. Then May 15th rolls around, North Korea cancels a meeting with South Korea. At that same time, they called into question Bolton's comments, saying it is essentially a manifestation of awfully sinister move to impose on our dignified state the destiny of Libya or Iraq, which had been collapsed due to yielding the whole of their countries to big powers. Then on May 17th, Donald Trump kind of tried to clear things up, but then may have accidentally made it worse. You may remember he said this. Well, the Libyan model isn't a model that we have at all when we're thinking of North Korea. Okay, so that was helpful, but then later adding. That was a total decimation. We went in there to beat him. Now, that model would take place if we don't make a deal, most likely. But if we make a deal, I think Kim Jong-un is gonna be very, very happy. And the problem there is that it appears that Donald Trump's actually referring to the 2011 Libya model. That was when NATO carried out airstrikes against Gaddafi and his forces, a situation that ultimately led to Gaddafi being killed in the streets, whereas the 2003 Libya model was just the country stopping their new nuclear weapons program. And for the North Koreans, that statement and that reminder, of course, could freak them out. And at that point, most likely what they're thinking is, well, if we look to Libya, what if they did have nuclear weapons? Would that have been a deterrent so that NATO didn't strike them? And if the international community did not get involved because they were fearful of a nuclear weapon, would Gaddafi be alive today? But because at that point, Libya model was just kind of out there, we saw Trump and Pence kind of try to change the narrative to, you know, if, if they don't make this deal, it will end up like the Libya model. But that's where we are as of right now. Donald Trump this morning was on TV saying, you know, he, he is willing to put things back on. If and when Kim Jong-un chooses to engage in constructive dialogue and actions, I am waiting. But as of right now, it does not appear that the summit will be happening, and we'll just have to wait and see what happens next. And that's where I'm going to end today's show. And of course, remember, this is the Philip DeFranco Show. I give you the news, sometimes my opinion, and then I want to hear from you, whether it be the last story, the first one, anything in between. Let me know in those comments down below. Also, remember, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Maybe even ring that bell. Sometimes it works. Also, if you missed yesterday's Philip DeFranco Show, you want to catch up, click or tap right there to watch that. Or if you need something lighter, you can watch the newest behind-the-scenes vlog. But that's and of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces, and I'll see you tomorrow.